And welcome back to the Win the Win Podcast. Ken and Tyler alongside uh, Coach Guys, head football coach of the FRA Panthers. And we have a special guest on today, a little <laughs> player segment, uh, Mr. Ty Clark. Welcome on. How are you? Doing good. Thanks for having me. Of course, as always. Coach, take it away. Yeah. Um, so, special guest today. Um, doesn't need much of an introduction around here. Everybody knows this guy. Uh, and I look forward to kind of pouring into it and having having the listeners kind of hear, um, hear about a lot of things about Ty Clark and kind of one, what brought him to, to Franklin Road Academy, um, you know, his his career in, as a student athlete here. And then obviously big, big day today um, is National Signing Day as Ty signed his letter of intent this morning to attend Wake Forest University. So we'll get into that as well. But Ty, again, appreciate you being here. Um, you know, third student athlete we've had on here. We had Luke to talk about his early signing. Um, a couple episodes ago back to UNC. We brought on a different perspective last week with Hank Verner, talking oh, wow. about a first-year senior in the program, what kind of the program brought to him and, and kind of his experience with FRA football. And now um, waiting on signing day for you today to, to kind of bring you on. But, Ty, tell me about your your um, what brought you to, to FRA to begin with and kind of how that transpired um, and then about maybe your four years here kind of in general. And, and – just tell me about your experience. Yeah, of course. Uh, I'll just say first, FRA was really not one of my first options when I was thinking sure. about like where to go for high school. Yeah, uh, I knew that I wasn't going to be attending Hume Falk, which is where most of the kids that attended my middle school went to. Right. But uh, I really didn't know much about like the private school life because I hadn't d- done it most of my life. And so we went on a search. We went looking at Father Ryan, MBA, FRA. So we looked at all these sure. different schools. And after, really, I got into contact with uh, Steve Johnson, yeah. Will Johnson's uh, uncle. He's, he was a, an alumni about two years ago. Sure. Uh, after I got into contact with him, he was really supportive through the Bordeaux Eagles, which yeah. is the youth yeah. football organization right. I grew up playing for. Right. Ooh-wee. Along with, <laughs> <ooh>. <laughs> along with uh, Bobby Council and Logan Kennard as yeah. well. Yeah. So he actually got, got them to go there pr- the previous year, which was eighth grade year. Yeah. And I kind of held out a little bit. I was a little been a little shy, a little bit hesitant, but uh, I finally, he was able to convince, convince me uh, freshman year, and yeah. ever since then, really just took off from there. And uh, my four years after that, I mean, it's been nothing but great for me. The people here, I was so glad they, me and my family made this decision to come here, because really the people here have done nothing but help me, sure. did nothing for nice for me, really developed me into the young man I am today, so yeah. I've been very grateful. Yeah, for sure. And again, like I said, when I said from the start, um, kind of no introduction needed. I think, you know, when people look at Ty's four-year career, everyone's seen him on the gridiron, on the football field, and what he's done there. And obviously, we'll talk about that here in a second. But more importantly, how he's entrenched himself into the entire community and being kind of that renaissance person that we want all our players to be and included in other areas, involved in other areas of student life and pouring himself, obviously, into the classroom and being the best student he can be for, what, for almost 4-2, 4-3 GPA, whatever it is, Ty. You got it. It's up there. Um, and, and, and um, you know, really, really molding himself into what we want all our guys to, to become. So, um we fast forward kind of Ty four years, um, you know, um, you go through the last two seasons of our program. Um, tell me a little bit about your experience there. I mean, obviously on the field it's shown that you've uh, rushed for, I don't know, almost 1,900 yards, and I can't remember how many touchdowns. I should have the stats in front of me. I'm not a big stats guy. That's okay. I'm not but let's say much. it was a lot of touchdowns. It was a lot of yards. Um, you know, Mr. Football finalist, um, All-State. Offensive player of the year, two years running in the league. I mean, I could go on and on with all the accolades. You know, and, and Ty, again, naturally so, he's a humble guy. He's not going to talk about himself in that way. Sure. Um, and we don't, as a program, really talk about those things anyway. Those are all things that we want to achieve. He's achieved them, but it's much deeper than that. So tell me about your experience with your teammates within the program over the last couple of years. Of course. Uh, like You know me well because I was not going to go in the direction of the stats and stuff. Yeah. But I was really just going to talk about like how the program really developed me to a better young man. Like I know... We have uh, three major parts of our program, WTO, which is our uh, process, our mission to live and be like Christ. And I really think the vision is what really played the biggest impact in my life, which Mm -hmm. is to create quality young men and football players as well. And as I look over the past two years, I noticed that myself is really, thankfully due to all the values and stuff that we teach, I've really turned into, well, 
I hope I turned it to a quality young yeah, man. Yeah. And um, I can see how it's also impacting my teammates around me. And I think that's a major part of, like, building quality young men is yeah. that you can't just have one person to do it. You got to have yeah. all, what was it, like 53 guys or something yeah. like that? Yeah, All 53 of the guys bought in. So as I look back over all the relationships, like, from the camps, like Agape and stuff, yeah. like, you can't just go through something like that with a random person and not come out as, like, their brother, like, after sure. you go through experiences and stuff like hardships of the season, injuries, stuff like that, all the lessons that we've learned throughout the journey, like eventually those guys are going to end up turning into your brother, somebody that you want to look out for. So okay. I'll probably say that's how it changes. Yeah, I, and I love that. And you, you kind of recited our right what our vision is, ultimately to create quality young men first, quality football players second. Well, a lot of times you have guys that – Inspired, like football has been everything that they've wanted to, wanted to be their whole lives. They want that inspired to go off and play Division One like football like you're about to embark on and go on to the NFL and all these things. But tell me why, in your opinion, and you've experienced it, but you just said it, why do you feel like those things go hand in hand? You know, Why do you think being a quality young man in, in sight is going to help you be the most quality football player and how do those things kind of work together? Right. What do you think? I got you. The values of a young man eventually will end up translating to the football field. So, like, I know we really stress a lot during the season, like, being on time to places. If you're going to be on mm-hmm. time to practice, then we can trust you. Mm-hmm. A lot of a lot of it builds into trust as well. Like, if I can trust you to be on time here, to run your route this exact way, to go 100% in this drill, then I can trust you, like, as a brother and another person on the team. I can trust you to make that block during the game so I don't get my, like, head turned off by some, like, huge lineman or something like that. Sure, sure. So I say, like, yeah, that's probably just a major thing for me right there. Okay. Well, you get to this point, you get to signing day, and how that, by the way, how was that experience this morning? I mean, did you feel like a weight's off your shoulders? A little bit, because I was very stressed. I had no clue where I was going to be going. And then after I got that call and I was able to sign, I'm like, thank you, God. Like, I can take a lot of – a lot of it off my shoulder right now. Right. Well, for for those that don't know and haven't followed Ty's kind of career and, and and his recruiting profile and the process he's gone through, I mean, obviously when you're a when you're a four two plus GPA guy, multiple APs, you know, have the kind of background and what he's done here in his body of work at FRA, and on the football field, you're going to have schools um, from high, the high academic caliber schools across the country drooling over what what he can bring to the table so all the ivy leagues um you know the patriot league schools the high academics were have been all over you know ty from the start and actually some of the ivy leagues you know ty took some visits and he was looking at dartmouth for a while which was a great option for him um and you know kind of wake forest came through there at the end with an offer um i think davidson academy there had a coach you know at the game watching them and um, what you know, I, I can't recall now to tie exactly when that offer came through. It was later in the year. It was late, right? probably around November. I want to say November, yeah. December, but it, yeah, it was later in the year. But again, and and tell me if I'm wrong, and you know, the competitor side of tie having the opportunity to play at a Power Five program, um, be at a top academic institution at the same time, kind of was the best of both worlds for him. Oh, for sure. Tell me about. Why Wake Forest? What, what, through the process, you got to see some of these schools, you got this interest, what really decided, what, what, what was the decision kind of, what did it come down to for you on that? For sure. For me, I really just felt like it was the care of the coaches for me that was really played the biggest impact in my decision. Like, um, Wake Forest, like, prior to offer me, I had been, like, talking to them for a while, probably yeah. longer than many other coaches, and, they really kind of never, like, gave up on me in a sense. Like, they were very supportive, continued to show up to my games and stuff. And other colleges did that as well. But right. I just felt like, really, that they were, like, they did it the most. And to mm-hmm. that, me, that, to me, made a major impact on my decision. Also, I feel like there's a lot of similarities to FRA and Wake Forest. Sure. Like, I want to say it's one of the smallest Power 5 schools. Yeah. And also it's very highly academic as well. So yeah. it's kind of it's a, a little bit away from home, but – Kind of feels yeah. like I'm still there at the same time, so I feel like that wasn't a very tough decision for me to make. And yeah. my parents, I know they're very happy yeah. about it. How's Thank mom you. about you making yeah. that decision, she's, making that trip? Right? <laughs> she's way happier than she would be having to go to uh, New Hampshire. Which I is got to, yeah. Dartmouth fits, but yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, I think that was a major part for them too. Like they love it. The yeah. still got a southern feel to it. They right. can make the drive if need to be. But for yeah. me, also, yeah. it's not too close to where I won't be seeing them every weekend. So that was that was very great for me. So yeah, it all ended up working out. Yeah, and a classmate of yours on our podcast, yeah. 
It's gonna be able. She's not here today, is she? She's a. I think she has a dance thing, but she talked to me about it. She texted yeah. me. She was like, "Ty, would you be interested in doing this?" Yeah. But there, so, I think they're at a dance competition in Florida. I want to say. Oh, I hate she's not here to comment on today. I think something like yeah. that. But I know she was super excited about going down and and you know trying out for the dance team and possibly be on the field next to a oh yeah oh yeah an old classmate. You know, <laughs> it was a pretty cool thing. But um, but Ty um. Um, as you know, this goes without said. Couldn't be more proud. You can't can't wait to celebrate this afternoon with a, a little signing day for oh, yeah. for you and Luke this afternoon um, for those guys that have already said them. And we'll have several others here over the course of the next several weeks that make their college decisions, go on to play football for 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 uh, past FRA as well. So we're excited to to talk about that down the line. But Ty Clark, um, it's been a pleasure, obviously, and you know everything you've done for our program, everything you've done for our school. I know you'll continue to be part of us for for eternity, you know, because you've laid laid a, a strong legacy here. So I appreciate your work, and um, you know everyone's wishing you the most success, you know, as you're the newest Demon Deacon. <laughs> yes, sir. All uh, right, and Winston Salem. So congratulations. Yep. Um, Thank you so much, Thank you, Kevin. Yeah, great to have you on. Thank you. Thanks, guys. See you next time. And welcome back to the Winland Podcast. Ken and Tyner alongside uh, Coach Geisinger. Uh, and, Coach, let's, let's hop right into it. Obviously, signing day today. Yep. Obviously, we heard from Ty Clark earlier. Right. Um, you know, kind of talk about your signing day maybe or the importance of today and what that kind of means across yeah, the country. Yeah, no, yeah. I mean, big day, obviously, right? A lot of, a lot of young men um, signing letters of intent to, to go on to, to kind of the, the next phase or the next, you know, the next level, you will, of pursuing their dreams to continue playing the game that they all love, right? right. And um, also signing to a, the respective college and universities where, you know, hopefully they'll spend the next four to five years and, you know, and a big, big part of their growth in their lives. So it's a big, big decision, a uh, big day for a lot of these programs, a lot of these schools, and a big day for, for our players and students here as well. I mean, obviously okay. we talked to Ty earlier. We got to talk to Ty, or Luke a couple weeks back. Um, we get to celebrate those guys here in just a couple hours um, out in the commons and have a have a big c- ceremony. And talking to Ty, you know, you heard from him earlier, just kind of a big weight off these guys' shoulders after a long recruiting process and trying to decide what's the best fit for them, for sure. what's the best fit for their next steps as they kind of leave our halls and go on to do um, do the next thing. So really exciting there. And, and you know, the process doesn't stop. I mean, obviously today's the – National, you know, signing day and a lot of, you know, mostly you look at the Division One schools and things like that as, as these guys are going on the next level. But still several of our players and thousands across the country that are still looking for homes over the next several months as we get into the spring. Um, as, you know, you have NAIA, Division Two, Division Three school programs still looking to fill rosters and things. So that recruiting process will continue, you know, Canon, as we go into the into the spring and like I said as we fit some of these guys and I look forward to talking about some of our other guys that are still looking for homes and kind of sharing that up over the next month or two but um, exciting day on campus exciting day obviously for um, for Luke and Ty and um, you know couldn't be more proud of our group and uh, big day yeah two big seniors here at FRA now let's switch back into what we talked about last week kind of touched on it briefly, yeah but the senior uh, kind of meetings at the end of the year. Sure. You know, talk, talk to us about that, what that and that kind of entails and yeah. how important that is to this program. Yeah, well, you know, a, as we said, kind of, I guess we've been talking over the last few weeks um, as we started these pods back right. um, as far as kind of what's going on this time of year. Obviously, the recruiting piece has been a big piece for our kids and having those schools, but now that's kind of died out. There's been a dead period the last, you know, few days leading up to signing day today. There's been a lot of other things going on as well within the program. We talked a little bit about already about, um, you know, the end of the season equipment and ordering and refer, right. you know, reconditioning and everything we need to do as far as inventory. Coach Hansen and kind of his group of guys is in the football ops side of things gets prepared for the next year. Um, you know, we hit a little bit on that. And, um you know, what you mentioned really is our exit interviews and meetings. So we go through with staff and players. And that's, to me, one of the more important pieces, um, you know, that w- that we get into at the end of the year because it's an opportunity um, for myself, for our coaches to really, um, you know, sit down with these guys and um, recap the year. Be able to not only talk to our players about um, the season that they had and maybe things we're looking to improve upon next year, um, they get to hear from us and hear feedback, but 
Um, I think more importantly, we get to hear from them as well. I think, you know, we talk about having ownership in our program and everybody owns a piece of our program, exactly. regardless if you're a four-year senior or first-year player. Or, you know, everyone has that ownership because everyone has a chance to impact our program in so many ways, regardless. Um, and I think when you develop a culture like that and you develop a buy-in like that and, and then our players feel heard and they feel like they do have that piece of ownership, um, you know, that helps motivate our guys, but that's important for them to feel that way as well because it's the truth. I mean, because they, sure they will, um, you know, that buy-in is, is, is just as important as a coach is, if not more so. So, exactly. um, you know, so, yeah, we, from every player on our roster, um, had an opportunity to do that. Um, even our senior players who are graduating out, because for me as a coach, sometimes, you know, and I'm, I think we hit on this a little bit before, but kind of in more depth, I think, you know, Senior players, as they graduate out, graduate out, know that they're not going to be wearing the Panther blue anymore. Kind of have might be a different perspective on wh- how they can reflect back on their whether it was a one year or four year career here um, playing football, and really give us some good insight on their experience and some things that maybe we really do really well that we can enhance, and maybe some things that we need to improve upon. You know, yeah. um, and I think good programs are always looking to. Improve. You know, I don't really believe in the well. If it's broke, you know, if it's not broke, don't fix it right. mentality. Because I think you can always enhance and get better at every facet of what you're doing. So that's what we're looking to do as coaches, and as we continue to build the program. But we're also looking at that feedback from our players, and that's so important. And again, right. they want the feedback too, right? They they want to improve. They want to be challenged. Um, and so we kind of look at plans as they go, you know, get into their off season. We're almost now through with winter sports season, and we'll be into spring sports season. And before we know it, it's crazy. And it's fine, before you know it, it'll be spring practice again. So, right. but um, no, really, really good uh, set of meetings. And um, you know, we're excited about you know our guys returning. We're excited about our guys that are going on to the next level, and those guys that are just going on to college and and and, and continuing their educations. But. Um, you know, really productive meetings and, and kind of moving forward from there. Exactly. Well, you know, kind of wrap around the segment here. Obviously, yeah. this Sunday, big game. We sure. About a Super Bowl. Super Bowl Sunday. What do you got? Tell us a little about what you think about this whole Travis Kelsey, Taylor Swift thing. Real quick. Wow. What do you think? Yeah. You know, that, that's been, you know, my wife's probably followed that more than I okay. have. Okay. You know, but I'll tell you what, it's it, the relationship in itself to me, great. You know, right. yeah, I mean, it's still going strong. I think a lot of people would have thought maybe it would have fizzled by now. Whether that's a marketing thing or whether that's the real thing, yeah. I don't know. Only they know that. But yes. um, it's been, it's been, you know, it's been a fun dynamic. I think yeah. it's, it's, it's for sure. I would imagine brought a lot of different viewers to the game. I agree. Um, and that's, you know, at least I, that's what I read or hear. Um, you more viewers for them means more money. Yeah, in the pocket, yeah, so. of course. Um, so that that'll be, I'm sure, fun. I, I've heard. Of, and I, it might, I might have, I don't know if I was dreaming about this, probably not. But at some point, I thought I heard they were going to have one of those stations, whether it's like E News or one of those stations uh-huh. that was literally going to be a Taylor cam. No. That would have the camera on her the entire really? Super Bowl so you could watch her reactions to everything. <laughs> the time. So maybe that was just, maybe that's not happening. But maybe I did, I heard dream. that somewhere. And to me, that would make sense. You yeah, talk well. about boosting a station, yeah. people will probably watch that. So. Um, but no, big game. Who do you have, Cannon? Who, who's your pick? Who's your well, pick I think, for the big game? You know, everyone wants the 49ers. Yeah. Everyone, you know, some people want the Kansas City Chiefs. Yeah. They're both good teams. Sure. But I think America needs the 49ers on this one. Yeah. And that's what I, I'm backing.